Hello everyone, I welcome you all in this lecture which is 49th lecture of the course process equipment design and here we are going to discuss the distillation column and for that we are considering the process design. Okay. Now as far as this lecture is concerned here we will address one milestone but before that let us focus on the complete milestone which we are going to cover in this topic that is distillation column process design. So, here we have some milestones like first we have discussed the distillation and the continuous process and we already have covered the design method for binary system and here we have focused on mcap thalay method ok and after that we will consider design of multi component system and and then plate efficiency and finally we will focus on plate hydraulic design ok so in this particular lecture we will consider this topic that is design of multi component that is design of multi component system ok now as far as this multi component system is concerned obviously that you understand that in this case we have more than two components which are available in the feed which we have to separate using distillation process right. So, let us see. So, let us discuss some facts about that. So, when we focus on multi component system the problem of determining the number of stages and the reflux requirement for such system it is much more complicated or complex in comparison to when we consider or calculate these in binary system ok and that you understand because, because handling multi component system is complex in comparison to binary system. So, as far as this multi component system is concerned if I am having more than two component we call that as multi component system right. So, in this case we cannot get the complete composition of top and bottom product independently. Some of the product will be available in top and some of the product will be available in bottom. However, in however in the However, in the case of binary system we may get the clear composition at top as well as bottom ok. So, so how we so how we have to handle this problem ok. The separation between top and bottom products is specified by setting limits on two key components between which it is desired to make the separation ok. So, when we deal with the multi component system among different component we choose any two components between among these components we choose any two components between which we desire to have complete separation or the separation. If it is not complete at least significant separation should occur between these components ok. So, when we select such component we consider these components as the key components ok and separation we consider between these key components only. However, we have some methods also in which without selecting these key component we can calculate the number of stages and the reflux requirement depending upon the multi component system. So, in this lecture we will discuss one of such method and that method is given by Lewis and Matson. Okay. So, one of the most successful method for calculating number of trays or number of plate for a given separation is proposed by Lewis and Matson. Now, as far as this method is concerned what is con now as far as this method is concerned what it considers if the composition of the liquid on any plate is known ok the composition of liquid when it is known on any plate then the composition of vapor in equilibrium with that liquid is calculated from the knowledge of vapor pressures or relative volatilities of individual component. So, we can use the relative volatility as well as the pressure drop data to find out the unknown composition of the vapor ok which is in equilibrium with the liquid 
okay so that consideration is so that fact is considered by lewis and matson method and further and further the composition of liquid on the plate above is then found by using an operating equation as for binary mixture right although in this case there will be separating there will be a separate equation for each component okay so in this way we define the operating condition with respect to each component and then we can calculate the liquid composition on the plate which is above then on which we have calculated the vapor composition which is in equilibrium with the liquid as we have discussed in second point in this slide right so now we will demonstrate this method and then we will illustrate the calculation using this method with the help of example so let's see how this method works if i consider the mixture which is having four component let's see a b c and d and we can consider much more component than that so the component a b c and d and so on it means other components if are it means other components are also available in the mixture the composition of these components are let's say x a x b x c and x d and so on right and obviously when i am considering x a it means this is basically corresponding to the liquid streams right so so if these mole fractions are available corresponding to these component we can consider further that y a y b y c y d and so on in vapor composition so on in vapor streams okay so this is basically the norman this is basically the normal nomenclature that x we denote for liquid stream and y we consider for vapor stream so if i am having such components then ya plus yb plus yc plus yd and so on should be equal to 1 okay accordingly we can consider the vapor composition and the complete composition should be equal to 1 right that is basically the normal condition we consider for composition now further if i divide the whole equation by yb okay you can consider any other component also so here i am having ya by yb plus yb by yb then plus yc by yb and then yd by yb and that should be equal to 1 by yb right in this way we can represent the equation and when i divide all compositions by the same amount from left hand side as well as right hand side it is not making any difference right so if i am having this type of uh, representation i can represent the equation or i can represent the terms in this way where alpha a b is the relative volatility and that i can relate with the composition in liquid phase okay of the same component as we can see in this equation right now the point is how we can obtain each term of that okay that we can understand through this equation where alpha is related to partial pressure as well as the composition in liquid phase fine and that alpha is nothing but the relative volatility as we have discussed in the previous slide okay now if this is the equation what we can consider further we can replace pa with pya that is the partial pressure of component a should be equal to total pressure into the composition in vapor phase right that is the general conception and similarly i can represent pb with capital p y p pb with capital p y b okay and now i will put this pb as well as pa in this equation so when i do this i can find alpha should be equal to ya xb divided by yb xa right 
So, in this way I can relate relative volatility with the composition of component in vapor phase as well as in liquid phase. So, let us see further. I can rearrange this equation and find this new equation which should be equal to y a minus y b and that should be equal to alpha x a by x b. Okay. So, if you consider this term as well as this term, this I can represent simply by this where alpha is the relative volatility of component A with respect to component B because component B I have considered as the because component B I have taken as the reference component right. And similarly, when we consider this equation for uh, this term it should be alpha B B x B by x B ok. So, that is basically 1 ok because when I consider relative volatility of a component with having the same reference. So, that should be 1 only and similarly y c and y b I can represent by this considering this conception only ok. So, in this way I can represent the equation y a and y b plus number of term should be equal to 1 by y b with this complete expression right. So, further I can obtain this term ok. Now, how I will obtain this term? So, if you see here I am having alpha a b into x a ok. If I take this x b here ok. So, that would be x b by y b and all these term I can sum up and that should be summation alpha a b x a ok. And similarly, when I vary a, I can have summation of other components also. Okay. So, further I can further I can rearrange the expression and I can obtain y b should be equal to x b divided by summation alpha a b by summation alpha a b into x a. Okay. So, in this way composition of component B in vapor can be equated to composition of same component in liquid phase divisible by summation of relative volatility of component A with respect to B into x A. Okay. And similarly, I can consider different components over here as we have discussed previously also fine. And further we can consider y a should be equal to x a alpha a b divisible by summation of alpha a b x a. Now, how I can obtain this equation? So, if you come, so if you focus on this it is basically y a by y b which is equal to alpha x a by x b. Okay. If I consider y a from here that should be equal to alpha and this alpha should be a b right x a and y b we can and y b we can consider over here divisible by x b ok as it is available over here ok. Further if I replace this y b with this equation what I can write alpha a b x a x b divided by x b summation alpha a b x a right. So, this will be cancelled out and uh, we can have this term which is available over here ok. So, in this way you can obtain the composition of uh, y b with respect to other compositions ok. And similarly, I can show the composition of component c in vapor phase and component and composition of component D in vapor phase. Okay. So, this equation we can calculate to find out the unknown cal. So, this equation we can calculate to find out the unknown composition in vapor phase if I know the composition in liquid phase. Right. Therefore, it considers that the composition of the vapor is conveniently found from that of the liquid by use of relative volatilities of the components as we have just seen. 
okay so in this way you can see how we can obtain the composition in vapor phase if i know that in liquid phase okay so let's illustrate this method with the help of one example and here we have example 1 in this example a mixture of ortho meta and para mono nitro toluene which contains 70 percent 5 percent and 25 percent mole in which contains 70 percent 5 percent and 25 percent mole in the feed okay and it is continuously distilled to give a top product where 97 mole percent of ortho and in the bottom 15 mole percent of ortho should be obtained okay so if i am having 97 percent ortho in the top product rest will be meta and para okay and this mixture is to be distilled at a temperature of 410 kelvin which requires pressure in the reboiler about 6 kilo newton per meter square okay so in this way composition in feed as well as some of the components in top products is as well as some of the components in top products are given and uh, further we are known that reflux ratio is 5 so what we have to find is how many ideal plates will be required and what will be the approximate compositions of the product streams okay the volatility of ortho relative to the para isomer may be considered as 1.7 and that of meta as 1.16 okay in the temperature range 380 to 415 and 410 will be between this so we can use this information to find out ideal number of trays using lewis matson method so let's start that so to start the calculation we will assume the unknown components in distillate so let's see how we can so let's see how we can consider that so in the so in the top we can consider that 0.9 mole percent meta and 2.1 mole percent para is available as feed contains only 5 percent as well as 25 percent of meta and para respectively so material balance will give the composition of the bottom product so let us see how to find it if i consider 100 kilo mole of feed with d and w kilo mole of product and bottoms are of product and bottoms are available it means this product is basically the top okay and composition is xdo and xwo okay which is basically the mole fraction of ortho in distillate and bottom so how i can find the component balance let us see that so you see overall balance should be 100 should be equal to d plus w right and then we can make the component balance based on ortho okay so ortho is 70 percent in the feed total feed is 100 kilo mole so 70 should be the ortho and that should be equal to d into x d o plus w into x w o okay so in distillate ortho is 97 percent and in bottom ortho is 15 percent it is already given to us so we can simply write the equation as 70 should be equal to 100 minus w right we can replace this d this is the simple calculation into 0.97 plus 0.15 into w right so we can find out w from here as 32.93 and distillate as 30 and distillate as 67.07 kilo mole right so once i know the flow rates or the total moles available in distillate and bottom i can make the balance on other components and complete the table for components available in feed top and bottom so in this table we can show the compositions of all components okay so feed it is already given distillate we have assumed and bottom we can 
obtain by balancing ok. So, as we have done the balance on ortho in the similar line I can make the balance on meta as well as para ok. So, all these values you can obtain. Now, if you focus on Lewis Matson method it basically calculates the composition of component considering operating line and the slope of this operating line. So, first of all we will see how the operating line of top and bottom can be obtained. So, first so first of all we will focus on the above feed condition and, and there I can find out the liquid flow rate which is related to the reflux ratio as well as distillate. Distillate, mole distillate moles we know already and uh, it should be multiplied by 5 because 5 is the reflux ratio. So, total liquid which is coming down is 335.37 right and uh, similarly I can find the vapor which is going up by simple by simple material balance that V n should be equal to L n plus D ok. So, that should be 402.44 ok. Further what I consider is that below the feed point feed is available at boiling point. So, it is available in pure liquid. So, liquid which is coming down should be equal to whatever liquid is coming from the top that is 335.37 plus that is available with feed. So, total LM which is coming down to the feed tray should be 435.37 right. In the similar line whatever vapor is going down in the similar line whatever vapor is going up below feed below feed tray that should be equal to L m minus w right. So, it is basically 402.44 that you can consider here as well ok. So, in this way we can find out the flow which is available above the feed as well as below the feed and now we will derive the expression for operating line. So, let us first focus on the bottom feed plate. If we consider the bottom feed plate if we consider the plate which is available below feed plate this is the expression ok. This we can consider in binary system also there we have derived it. So, you can refer that lecture. So, if I focus on ortho. So, if I focus on ortho then y m o is basically given by l m v m ok. L m is uh, because it is below feed. So, l m should be this one and V m should be this one right. It is multiplied by x m plus 1 minus w is basically 32.93 we have obtained that in the we have obtained that in the last slide and V m is basically 402.44 and that should be multiplied by x w right. So, we can simply consider the equation for ortho as this ok. So, this is basically the operating line below feed for component ortho. In the similar line I can consider the in the similar line I can consider the equation for meta as well as para as you can see here ok. So, considering these equations we can find out the composition of component at below feed plates ok. Further we consider above feed plates and this is the operating condition for that L n and V n I have already calculated in the previous slide. So, that you can refer. So, so these values multiplied by x n plus 1 plus d by V n. So, d I have represented as 67.07 and V n I have obtained as 402.44 into x d right. So, this is basically the composition. So, this is basically the operating line for ortho above feed plates and similarly I can obtain for rest two components ok. So, let us start to calculate the composition in different plates. We will start with the first plate, but that first plate we are considering from the bottom 
ok. So, you can consider the composition of vapor we can find with the correlation. So, the composition of vapor we can find with the correlation related to composition of that component in liquid stream and relative volatility and relative volatility ok. So, this expression we have already derived previously that you can refer. So, we can consider the liquid composition in first plate and that is for the component ortho and you can obtain this equation ok. So, this is basically bottom operating line and here I am having this value y 1 ok. So, how and here I am having the value of y ok. So, how I can obtain this let us see this first if you see the plate composition below feed we can obtain using this equation ok. And here I am having the composition of bottom plate this we have already seen previously. So, if you consider for ortho the composition is given as 0 0.15 and that we can multiply with relative volatility because here I have to consider that and relative volatility is given as 1.7. So, multiplication of 1.5 into 1.7 will give 2 will give 0 0.255 ok and similarly I can obtain alpha x and similarly I can obtain alpha x s as these right summation of this will give the value like this which is basically this value ok. So, why how you can obtain simply divide simply divide this by this ok as you can see in this expression. So, 0.226 we can obtain ok which you can see over here ok considering this we can obtain x a as 0 0.221 as you can see here ok. So, in this way we can find out composition of each plate like 1 second third in that way ok. So, when we so when we see all compositions you can see the calculations over here ok. Now, further if we consider second plate third plate and so on and uh, the seventh plate you can find that seventh plate compositions are almost equal to that of feed it means seventh should be the feed tray ok. So, from the bottom we can reach to the feed tray and that is basically seventh tray. Now, we will consider the plates above the fleet. Now, we will consider the plates above the feed plate ok and that you can calculate using these operating lines which we have derived previously. So, in the similar line you can find the composition of 8th plate and ninth plate and so on ok. Now, if you consider the 14th equation. Now, if you consider the 14th plate ok in this case the composition will be more or less equal to whatever you can obtain in distillate ok. It is not exactly equal to, but it will be near to that ok. However, it is not possible when I am considering tray more than that. So, what is the total conclusion? So, what is the conclusion that total number of trays we can obtain as 14 right. So, in this way you can see how this method that is Lewis Matheson method works, but it is very complicated as far as calculations are concerned. So, in the next lecture we will discuss some other methods to find out number of trays for multi component system ok. So, that is all for now thank you.